Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I'm bringing to you a new deck profile for the Illusion Chimera type deck. Um, as you know, this deck did get support in Legacy of Destruction. Um, very, very good support as well for anybody who uh, has been messing around with it and knows this this new support is crazy. You get a new consistency card, a new extender. Um, it's crazy how good this card is. Um, so I'm going to jump right into the deck profile and if you guys enjoy, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this one. Okay guys, starting off with the deck profile. This is going to be Illusion, like I said, the Illusion Chimera deck, and we have the first card that I wanted to talk about is the new card out of Legacy of Destruction, and that is Nightmare Apprentice. This card is so, so good. Um, this is one of the best support cards we've ever gotten. This is on par for any of my uh, fellow Yu-Gi-Oh grandpas out there. When we got Mermail Abistius, uh, this feels just as good as when that was released, um, if not better, because it's, it effect works a little bit better. It is crazy how strong this card is. Um, no restrictions. I think this is going to be a possibly future problem card, depending on the illusion monsters that we get. Um, but it has a lot more utility than people give it credit for. And I think if you do not have three of this card lying around, I think you should have three of this card lying around, because it only takes one good illusion card for this card to be disgusting. And we can talk about that a little bit more as um, the farther I go. And as you know, illusions right now are pretty much based around Chimera is what we have. So we, of course, are playing the Chimera card. So we have our three copies of Mirror Sword Knight, our three copies of Cornfield. These would be our kind of starters here that we have um, that are guaranteed. But there's other ways to start, like using one of our three gazelles to fusion summon out of our hand. Um, along with possibly things like Burfermit, right? Um, this is the normal core package that we have. So these are our, like, obviously core starters. If you see them, you can play, but there are other ways to play as well. As I said, if you confuse Gazelle from the hand, you're able to search for any one of these, and then you are off to the races from there as well. So you have multiple ways to keep going. And it's nice that this card exists because you also are not completely based on Burfermit's on field effect to lock you into fusions, which opens up a lot of new diversity in the lines of play for this deck. You also probably should not be losing to D-Barrier as much anymore as well. While this is a fusion deck and it is definitely based on fusions, if you are D-Barrier, there are now alternate lines of play that you can take, maybe with Link Monsters um, and even a Synchro Monster now to be able to possibly um, either break a board or to push for uh, lethal damage or set up a... Um, type of board where your opponent cannot come back, which is very, very nice that we have that option. So um, that is for the actual like base engine monsters. Um, a tech choice that I am choosing to play right now, and I'll explain the reason why, is the new TCG exclusive card, um, which is uh, Vo Void Burial the Dragon Undertaker. As we know, Japan does not have this card. The OCG does not have this card. This is a TCG card, so they cannot play with a card like this and this is actually an illusion hand trap and these are the cards when i say it only takes one broken card to make this card so good i think a card like this could be uh, an answer and the reason for that is that if you summon this back on your opponent's turn you are able to get this card and then be able to have another point of interaction for your opponent granted i do not think this is the best hand trap ever hence why it is at one but it is one an illusion monster so it, for your fusion summons this card is has great utility to be able to fuse with any of these well not these top row but these ones to be able to go into the other fusion uh takes any of them to be able to get your combos going um and at the same time being able to revive this off of the chimera on your opponent's turn um is very very strong right like you can go on your opponent's turn chimera but make apprentice apprentice for this and then you have another point of interaction which is very very strong i like that a lot so i think this card has great utility there are other um, types of illusion cards that you can play. There is the wax card that I know a lot of people are playing and the Tau that people are playing. And I do not hate those cards. I think they are fine. It is just for me personally, I do not like drawing them. Uh, you open them in your hand and you are just pretty unhappy with them, I would say. The Tau one is better than the other ones, but like they don't do anything on their own. They are very, uh, either they're like Gazelle at his worst where you have to fusion with him or um, they are like the wax card, I think is just uh, like a battle trick card. So it's just not for me personally. I don't think you need something like that. When most of your illusion monsters cannot be destroyed by battle anyway, and you have multiple ways to revive them on your opponent's turn between both fusions. So there's a lot going for this deck, uh, for this part at least. And lastly, the cheese card, which I am really not sold on yet. What is the uh, Dark Barrier statue? There are other options that you can play for this. Things like End of Anubis um, is it just an example. King Tiger Wing, who I think is another decent example. But this is probably the best one as of now. I am not sold on this. I really don't want the deck to be diverged into just sending this and then reviving it and then just kind of sitting on it. I think that's a very boring play style, but is it the best play style for it? As of now, it is, for me at least, it's what's working the best. 
um, because the end, actual illusion end board is very weird. It's not like a normal end board, um, but there are other alternate options that you can take. Like usually you can end on about a rank six um, plus one of these guys, right? That's about where you want to be at. Um, possibly with Chimera Fusion set um, and these two in the graveyard. So you have like kind of multi-personality stuff going on here that your opponent can't really break through very easily, right? So kind of like a fire board, you have stuff in the grave, stuff in the field. And if you search this, you have stuff in the hand. So it's, it's very annoying to deal with. And this card, I think, makes it very one-dimensional because you're each your rank six because you want to make Beatrice. While you can send it with the um, the other level six you can do. Um, but I do not like going into Beatrice personally because it doesn't have any other value other than sending this. So it's just not for me. Um, that could be something like Evils or Lars, right? Like that's an actual interruption that can go into something. You could also go into something that is like a Link monster, right? Something maybe like Crosscheap if you can revive back into maybe Link Climb. Um, or maybe just an SP Little Knight or an IP Mascarena. Like when you're doing these lines, you're not locked into fusions from birth from it, so you're able to kind of diversify what you are doing. So, it, it, again, it, it's okay. It's fine. It's just there are other options, and I want my viewers to critically think about what they're doing, not just kind of copy-pasting everything that they're doing. So um, I would rather have the options out there than not, I guess, would be the way to put it. Uh, to complement this package, I am a fan of this um, Unchain, or not Unchain, Edge Imp <laughs> package with uh, Edge Imp Chains, Fright for Patchworks, and Polymerizations. This is just, honestly, they're great to me. I, I love these cards so much. You just need fusion spells, right? Like, you need more fusion spells, because there are some hands where maybe you don't open up Chimera Fusion, right? Because you don't always have this card, and you need access to it. And the ways to get access to it are from these guys. Both of these guys are the way you get to Chimera Fusion. And if these get hand-trapped and you don't open these, you need an alter alternative way to be able to get to them. So something like Patchwork and Tupali is very helpful. Obviously, Nightmare Apprentice Discarding Chain is also a another good option to be able to get your fusion spells and be able to start playing from there. This is the core basic Chimera engine that I am currently enjoying. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the actual cards themselves. Let me know how you are playing this deck engine-wise. I do think three Perfermit can be played, but it's just... You just brick on it too much, in my in my liking at least. So that is just my opinion on that. But overall, the Nightmare Apprentice, I think, is such such a crazy, crazy card that I cannot um, state it enough how good it is. Now for non-engine. Um, two copies of Talents. I like this card a lot because this deck can play through stuff now, like, better than it could before. It always could play through stuff, but now it definitely does it better. And Talents makes this uh, very, very strong, right? Because if you get hand-trapped on something, whatever it may be, whether it be Gazelle, Burr from it, maybe uh, anything really, the Apprentice, um, you are able to Talents, uh, rip another card out of your opponent's hand, and then as long as you are able to still play, which a lot of the times you can because of how this deck operates now, and you are able to summon your Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, um, you're putting your opponent starting at three cards in their hand, which is crazy in Yu-Gi-Oh! That is such a crazy thing to be able to do, and it cannot be understated that general cards, when you are still making interruptions as well, are just, it's, it's just insane, uh, to say the least. I don't know how else to say it. It's just crazy. It's so, so crazy. Especially, as you know, I you played the Runic version in the past. So when you are doing stuff like this, this, they're hand trapping at wall as playing uh, Runic Dispelling in that build, you could rip four cards out of your opponent's hand. And I promise you, a lot of the times they just do not know what like what just happened right like they just got to their first turn they played like one like a bonfire and like their hand's just gone like it, it, it's you just took everything from them and you didn't even commit anything yet it's crazy um so talents i think fits this deck really well i would play three but me and talents have a uh, bad toxic relationship where i draw multiple of them and then my opponent imperms me and not veilers me and i'm just uh sad about it but yeah i think this card is very very strong though <laughs> just my own personal uh, beef that i have with it um, but yeah, for hand trap wise, because we have to buy hand traps this four minutes, three copies of Ash, three copies of Veiler, three copies of Ogre, and three copies of Impermanence. Obviously, this has to be kind of like snake eye directed. I think that is very obvious. But there are other decks in the format that are not snake eye, right? Obviously, we have to worry about other things such as Voiceless Voice. We have Ubel that just came out, and um, there are uh, plenty of other options to play, obviously, this deck as well. Um, so I think Ogre is an okay card. It's good enough to me in the main deck where. I think it's valid, right? Um, Ogre in combination with other hand traps put your opponent sometimes in very, very weird positions, especially something like Ash Blossom. I think Ogre plus Ash is such a strong combination because usually your Snake Eye opponent is going to get to a point where you, as long as you let them do, get to Poplar, and then you uh, Ash something, whether it be the Ash or Oak second effect to stop them from getting from a Flamberge um, or the original Sinful Spoils. 
Um, they are immediately greenlit into thinking that they're going to go into Hita to take the Ash Blossom to then go into Princess and then kind of go from there. But if you are backing it up with a Ghost Ogre also, um, you are like just robbing them of everything because the extra fire extender should not do anything if they normal summoned already, if they already went through Poplar. And yeah, you should be in a pretty decent position. They can search a fire, but you are pretty much guaranteed where they're um, their board is very weak. It is nowhere near as strong as it should be, and it is probably breakable from your deck with things like Guardian Chimera. Um, all of these rest of hand traps, I think, are pretty standard. Nothing really crazy here. The only thing I will mention is something like Impermanence, right? Infinite Impermanence is obviously not a monster card. It is a uh, trap card. What does this mean? We, we can't fusion with it. This is kind of annoying. Uh, this is a literal card type synergy problem that this deck has, where Imperm might not be the best option for this deck. Um, I'm going to keep referring to the runic cards from before because all of my runic spells, they counted as monsters. I could use them as fusion material, which really, really helped a lot. But Imperm cannot do that. It is just a trap card hand trap. So this could be something better, maybe something like Nibiru, something like Mourner, um, things that are still hand traps but can also be used as fusion material for something like Guardian Chimera. So just something to keep in mind. I am just doing this now because I think it is just the better quality hand trap. But this something in awkward game states should be noted that this can be something else for more fusion material for your for your cards. Um, that is going to be it for the main deck. It should be 41 cards. Um, the 41st card was the extra hand trap for him. Again, you do not have to play him. I just wanted the extra target to search, and at worst, he's a hand trap and, and puts field presence on the field, which I like. Um, we're going into the extra deck. Um, this extra deck can change so much because of the Nightmare Apprentice. You are able to play so much more stuff, and I really can't stress enough that this is definitely not a standard this is a very basic line of of uh, extra deck and i want you guys to kind of like go into games see your board states and be like oh i could make this right here oh maybe i could do this maybe if i had this card um just good things that are good to know so i'm playing three chimera right now because i think as the games go on you don't have a strong end board and there is a lot of back and forth with this deck um this getting perpetual value over the uh turns of ripping a card on every end phase i think is very valuable and i'm only playing one of the levels uh, other level six i don't like this card too much i really only want to turn one to dump something like statue after that i'm only going to use it to banish to bring back the chimera anyway just so that we have extra bodies on the field or possibly you know other stuff that we could bring back but mostly it's to bring back chimera so that we still have that body on the field for our sword knight and um cornfield but yeah that's um yeah he's okay i'm not like crazy about him and then i am playing the one chimera illusion beast this card can just kill through stuff which i really really like um this card is able to otk against boards that you don't have to clear like this deck doesn't have a lot of board clearance only things like magnum of the reaver and um what's it called guardian chimera are the main cards that are going to clear boards so if you don't have to commit all of that into them you could just go into this and then just hit the same monster three times um after reducing it by one so this has to be able to attack four times ideally but you can cheese it with something like this plus this right so you can like do this and then hit it twice and then hit this once into it and then else the work um, so yeah, there's just like different ways to do it, which is very, very nice. So that is it for the actual illusion type of fusions. And now for other fusions that I have, I have one Stapelia, because I think this card's really, really strong. Um, just overall, uh, being able to negate a monster effect is extremely strong. And sometimes the level manipulation can come up. It doesn't come up as much as it used to back in the day with Sprite, but there is definitely still um, like warrant this card as just an on, just a negate every single turn. Um, very, very strong. I like this card a lot. Magnum the Reliever is another card that I really, really love as just general fusion support. I think this is one of the coolest cards that we've gotten as general fusion support and um, big, big fan of it being able to draw cards and uh, being able to pop on your opponent's turn as well for banishing those extra polys and chimera fusions that you don't need. Um, obviously, two copies of Guardian Chimera, the Chimera support. Um, this card is nuts. This is the best fusion. I think this is the best generic fusion we've ever gotten in Yu-Gi-Oh! This card is crazy. Um, I, would, I almost want to play three of it. This is it's such a good card. I, I love it so much because you can use anything to make it. It's ridiculous. Again, this is kind of where stuff like Mourner and the, um, the beers can come up instead of Imperms. You want them to go into something like this. This is where it's important. So yeah, um, Guardian Chimera breaking boards, very, very good, especially when you draw that six card hand trap, right? Everyone knows that feeling when your opponent makes a board and you draw your next card and it's like, oh, it's Ash Blossom. And 
you can get value out of that Ash Blossom because of a card like Guardian Chimera existing. So there's something that it's important that I want to preface on. Going into the not fusion cards, uh, more generic stuff, we have something like Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice, like as I said before, being able to send something like the Barrier Statue or maybe the Mirror Sword Knight or any of your other cards that you need in the graveyard at that moment. Um, I think it's okay. Again, I am not sold on this. I really am not the craziest fan of this. You just need a Wake 6 that detaches, so... Take that as you will, but I think this could also just be something generically strong, maybe like Evils are Lars or anything like that. That's the that's the one I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but some but the problem is is detaching. Like you really need something to detach. So um, that's just Beatrice right now. There are other cheese options you can play with this. Um, something like Transaction Rollback. Something like the Mayakashi Trap card with that. Again, lots of stuff you can do with this. But for me, it's just like eh. So feel free to you know distinguish in any way you want to. Uh, one copy of Typhon. I like Typhon a lot. Um, just as a card, I want it as an option first and foremost because it this one catches people off guard and can steal games by itself. Uh, lastly, is that Typhon is actually the exact type that we want, which is Fiend, so that we are not dead in the water if we have this sitting on the field. We are able to fuse with it for our uh, Chimera cards if we need to, which I like a lot. So moving on, uh, Baguska. Baguska is kind of the same thing, right? You are able to make rank fours in this deck, which is very, very nice. And then being able to go into this against something maybe like Flanderies, if you are Shiftered or even Kashdira, puts them in a not great place. They have to do awkward plays and guarantee you to live, and um, you can hold them all for an extra turn. And then again, being able to revive it back with both of these is very, very strong, and it'll immediately turn itself off on your turn in the standby phase so that you are able to um, play again after you stun them, essentially. And the last Exceed monster I'm playing is one Dugar is the Timeless. This is obviously a fire not a fire, a fiend that we are able to use and take advantage of, whether it be any of the effects with rank fours. Now, uh, the revive effect was actually something that was coming up a lot for me personally, and I was very happy, not happy, but I just came to a lot of board states where I had a lot of extra bodies, and I didn't know what to do with them, and I needed ways to be able to keep my engine going, but also have options to, you know, draw, and reviving was the main thing. I needed to revive, because I wanted to be able to get back um, things like Nightmare Apprentice, Burr From It, and things to keep the engine going if I already had a million cards on the field. Um, this, I don't know how to describe it. It just comes up. Being able to even bring these back as well is very, very nice. But it's a fiend that you can fuse with as well, so very, very strong. Um, for non-link cards, the only two that I'm playing is Chaos Angel and Little Knight. These two are just um, blanket very, very good. I don't know how else to describe it. It's really what they are. Um, obviously, Little Knight, I'm not going to explain. You can just anything, banish a card, interruption, very, very strong. Uh, Chaos Angel, um, obviously, in this deck, very strong because you have the light with Sword Knight and the dark with Apprentice Illusion. So this is one of those options where you can do where if you are um, maybe under D barrier, uh, you were able to go in the Chaos Angel and help break a board. And um, yeah, that's just like very, very strong. Some decks also just cannot out this if you are counting certain uh, like forms of interruption, uh, they, like what they're playing and taking hints as the games are going on. Some decks just cannot beat this card. And I think that's very uh, important to know. So overall, that is going to be my Chimera deck for now. This deck is probably subject to change because again, I don't like going for the cheese type of stuff with Beatrice right now. So I think it might change in the future, but we will see. Maybe I can play other stuff too, but eh, we'll figure it out in the future. But overall, let me know what you guys are playing down below for this deck. I'm really curious because I think this is one of the coolest and best cards that we have ever gotten for a uh, for a deck in a long time. This is very, very nice. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe if you did, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.